Let us start the meeting. Yeah. And I have a request to make before I start the meeting that all photographers make clear the place. <coughs> Today's theme is war on people. That's not anything new. Please. Since the beginning of history, there have been wars on people, probably even before the history began. But we are specific. When we say war on people, we mean the wars started by the government of India after the British left. One of the first things which the Indian state did was to send the military to Nagaland. When the people from Nagaland came here, we called them Chinese, we called them Burmese, we never called them Indians, but the land belonged to us. So we sent army to occupy the land, which extended over northeast very soon. I'm making some wild strokes, I will not go into the details. Then came 1987. There was an alliance between the Congress led by Rajiv Gandhi and National Conference led by Farooq Abdullah. They put up candidates. In normal course, I have been in Kashmir, so I can say very authentically, all the candidates put up by the alliance would have lost their deposit. All of them, with no exception. I'm talking about the Kashmir Valley, not Jammu. The people who contested against them were called United Muslim Friend. All the candidates should have won with a thumping majority if the election was fair, but it was rigged. All of them, all the candidates of the United Muslim Friend lost the deposit, while all the candidates put away the Congress in a national conference one with almost unanimous, silly, unanimous votes. That was the last straw on the camel's back. All of them left the Kashmir Valley and went to Azad Kashmir. It is they who started his bull Mujahideen, not I ISI, not by Pakistanis, but by Kashmiris who were born in the villages and towns of Kashmir. Now, the Indian army has moved to the heart of India. There's a vast forest region in the central India. It extends over several states. Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh. Then there are areas, forest areas in Jharkhand, parts of Bihar, parts of Orissa, parts of Bengal. There is a concentration of Adivasis there, tribals, indigenous people. They are the first people who came to India from Africa, the first human beings, the first homo sapiens. They have been staying there ever since they came here for millennia. But some 200 years ago, the Indian state started to make laws, which ultimately culminated in declaring all forests belong to the Indian state, which rendered them illegal occupants, trespassers, encroachers. They could be evicted. These areas are very, very rich in minerals, in ores. 
the government has entered into contracts, memorandums of understanding with some hundred companies, the transnationals, multinationals, monopolies. Each of them wants 200 villages, 250 villages, 225 villages. So the Indian state has sent their armed forces, some 200 police, 200,000 police, and 100,000 paramilitary forces. And now they say they will send the military itself. And their force, what will their force do? Will they, do nap will, will they drop napalm bombs some Americans did in Vietnam? But the Viet Cong survived even napalm bombs, even the army. So there is a war, it is a civil war. It is against the tribals who refuse to leave the forest regions. They resist. Sometimes the resistance turns violent. There are several incidents which we have uh, read in the newspapers. One of them was that a bus which carried civilians were blasted. It was not just a bus, it was a convoy. There were three trucks, two buses, and one jeep. <coughs> there were 100 policemen, 20 of them were regular police, and 80 of them were SPOs, special police officers. That's a euphemism. They are members of Salva Judam a vigilante organization, which was specially organized by the Indian state to kill Maoists who lead the tribals and the tribals who support them. On the previous night, they had gone to the forests, searching the Maoist activists, searching the tribals who supported them. They couldn't get them. But then they went to some place and killed three and they were on their way back. <clears throat> in the bus, there was 20 commandos who had, who had killed those three people. They were targeted, but they had uh, kept some civilians in it as a shield. Civilians were also killed. And recently, we have heard of a train blast. Uh, no, yeah, the train derailed and it was hit by a goods train. The PCPA, People's Committee Against Police Atrocities, has denied it. They have denied it several times. They have also offered their protection to the trains which will run in those areas. But the government keeps on insisting that it was done by PCPA. People's Committee Against Police Atrocities. Even Mamada Banerjee denies it. We have today, there are two speakers. Both of them have been in the battlefield. They have spent a uh, few weeks there. They will speak to you today. Gaudan Navalaka, he has almost been a Bombayite. He has stayed in Bombay several, several years as one of the <coughs> editors of Economic and Political Weekly, then Arundhati Roy. You all know her as much as I know her. So it will be preposterous that I introduce her to you. This meeting will be